A lot has changed since I last filmed a tour of my workspace five years ago. I moved, I went through college, and now working home remotely has really pushed me to spend most of my time in here. Everything you see here today is an accumulation of years and years of architecture school, YouTube, and more, so you'll see that I definitely have a lot more art supplies than one person actually needs. So let's get started with the much requested studio tour with this wall you see immediately walking in. On the wall, there's a huge soil map hanging that I got from some kind of almanac or handbook that I found in a thrift store, and it's surrounded by prints and postcards. One of the newest additions to this wall is this really beautiful print by Joanna, who goes by Josenal on Instagram and YouTube. I really love her artwork, and definitely you guys should all check it out. Other artists on the wall are Chow Facetime and Trevor Shin, who are also amazing artists that I follow on Instagram. This side table is a new member of the studio. Things are still moving around, but right now it hosts this box that holds my brushes for acrylic paint. These were more in use while I was in school, but not so much anymore. They have definitely taken a back seat to other mediums that I've been trying out. Next to it sits this pencil holder that I showed a few videos ago that's filled with a random assortment of writing utensils, watercolor brushes, and washi tape. I also like to keep a stack of these sauce dishes I'm not really sure if that's the right word for it, but I keep these dishes for mixing batches of paint when I need more space to mix than a regular palette can provide. On the right side of the table, I keep a few knickknacks, including this bowl that contains all of my random SD cards, and a bigger bowl on the bottom that holds extra batteries for my camera. Moving on to the drawers of this table, there's no rhyme or reason to what I keep in here. These are mostly all random art supplies. There are different types of clips, some scrapers, a tin of steel pens, a box of my favorite pencils, which are the Uni Mitsubishi 10B pencils, this pink peony pigment set from Choosing Keeping that I showed in my last video, and a set of Rapidograph pens that I used more often in school. In the left drawer, I keep paper samples with paint tests for each one and other various paint samples as well. I keep my water-soluble graphite and a little dish for it, some old pencils from Viarco, I don't know how you pronounce that one, a bunch of little paper scraps that I don't want to throw away just yet, and this pad of flower ephemera. As you can see, it's just a random assortment of things. The bottom shelf of the table holds unfinished sketchbooks that I like to reach for, and next to that pile, I keep this roll of this craft masking paper that I got from Lowe's. It's really inexpensive, and the reason why I use it is to help protect the surface of my desk when I know a project will get messy or if I'm using toxic materials that shouldn't linger um, around in the room. This metal box holds paint markers, acrylic paints, and mediums, as well as some erasable colored pencils. Moving on to where I spend most of my time, this is the desk tour. This desk is actually a standing desk, meaning that it can be adjusted in height, which is really nice, especially now that I'm spending a lot of time working at my desk. I'm pretty tall. My posture has become so concerning in the past few months, so being able to kind of just adjust how I'm sitting or standing has been kind of a huge relief on my back. I've been trying this desk out for about a month now, and it's been really great. A company called Flexi Spot sent this over for me to try out, and this is the EC one desk with a maple top with a silver frame and I actually built this desk all by myself which led to this satisfying sense of accomplishment and I also love how the wood looks on the camera which is important to me since I film most of my videos on my desk. To be honest, I was a little concerned about water damage to the table since I use water so often for my paintings and, and since I like to water my plants on my desk, but the folks over at FlexiSpot informed me that the desk is water resistant and so far I haven't seen any hint of damage, so that's really great. I've seen other art YouTubers using this as well and I just really wanted one and I'm also convinced that my brother is going to steal this from me when I'm not looking since he's actually been the one wanting a standing desk for a while now because he likes to game and stuff. On that note, my brother really wanted to do this. I'm sorry. This desk has been brought to you by Flexi Spot. 
So I like to keep two big jars of water at my desk and I need to cover them. My door doesn't lock, so my cats like to break into this room, so the lid prevents them from drinking this paint water. On the right side of the desk, I've been keeping a huge tub of colored pencils and a pencil sharpener. I've been experimenting more and more with these pencils, so it's really nice having them just right next to me while drawing. I also keep all of my various rulers and straight edges in this amber vase, along with a few other miscellaneous things like a pencil, an eraser, etc. I've been really interested in architectural drawings in relation to illustration lately, so I've been using these rulers more often for orthogonal drawings. This is where I keep most of my watercolor brushes. No matter how many brushes I give away or donate, I always seem to have an excess amount of them. <laughs> Last on this desk is a butcher tray that's being used to hold a towel for drying my brushes for now. Other times it's used as a palette, or other times it's just used as a catch-all tray. There are two big cabinets hugging each side of the desk. The one on the left holds the paper that I use for my drawings. They're held in this metal accordion paper holder. It's probably not great to store paper this way, but personally I just like organizing and seeing all of the papers at once like this. And on top of that shelf, I keep other various objects, mostly supplies for paint making. This cabinet is also where I keep all of my watercolor palettes that I've accumulated over the years, and the bottom drawer just has a ton of random things like sandpaper and face masks. Moving on to the right cabinet, this box is where I keep most of my used sketchbooks. And this box holds some new art supplies that I've been trying out, and also some old supplies that I've kind of been rediscovering and have been using more often. This top drawer holds various drawing supplies like charcoal and pencils, while this bottom drawer holds a ton of stationery that's mostly from my middle school and high school days, and also this 3D printed plumbus for some reason. <laughs> Moving on to the wall that's across from my desk, these two huge dressers hold clothes on the bottom and some more art supplies on top. In here, I've been keeping my box of knives, which is probably my most treasured supplies. There are a variety of scissors, exacto knives, blades, etc. I just love collecting different types of sharp things. I don't know. In this box, I keep all of my book binding supplies that I mostly obtained while I was in school when I took a class on artist books. These are various papers from Choose and Keeping that I'm planning to use for bookbinding as well. These two palettes are my biggest palette. This palette is the newest in my collection and it holds poster color paints. This palette is my oldest palette which holds, of course, watercolors. I have an obscene amount of washi tapes and they're kind of stored all over the place but these are my favorite ones and these tapes are ones that have mostly been gifted to me by friends. I'm trying to grow my collection of children's books, so I would actually love to hear what your favorite book was growing up or what your favorite book is now. I would really, really love to check them out because, yeah, I'm just trying to discover new titles. Like I said before, today's look at this art room was very clean and organized, but again, it's more like seeing a frame of a constantly fluctuating mess. In a few days, things won't be where they were before, and there definitely isn't a right place for anything that you saw. I also just want to underscore that this art room is chock full of art supplies and other materials, but it really doesn't matter. Having a well-stocked studio or an art room at all, for that matter, doesn't make an artist. People have done a lot more with a lot less. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.